out to all of our visionaries that are watching online. We're so glad that you joined us for today. We are starting a brand new message series. But before I put it on the screen, I need all of us in our minds to go back, back in time. I want you to go all the way back to maybe the end of last year or the beginning of this year. Do you remember how motivated you were with your New Year's resolutions? You remember that? You remember those things that you wrote down? You were like, this is the year that you're going to fill in the blank. Y'all remember this? Oh, it's real quiet up in here. It's real quiet. That lets me know that some of us, probably around... Martin Luther King's birthday, we let those resolutions go, if we're going to be honest, right? Maybe your thing was this year, I'm working out, right? You're going to be running. You're going to be lifting the weights, all of those things. And fe by February, you were like, ah, I'm going to start on Monday. <laughs> and then Sunday came around, and you're like, I'm going to do it tomorrow. And you're like, all right, it's going to be next Monday. I got it. And now it's September, and you, Monday it still hasn't shown up and you have not working out. Maybe it was, okay, this year you're going to save some money. You're not going to be spending. But then you saw those shoes, y'all, and you just couldn't pass them up. But you knew that you were going to save some money, but that didn't happen. Anybody been there this year? Anybody? Anybody had some goals, some resolutions, some things that you were going to do, and you didn't do them? And so now here we are. It's almost the fourth quarter of the year. And I know for a lot of us, it's around this time of year that we start thinking about next year. And we start making these plans and goals of like, okay, come January, we're going to do this. People will have vision board parties. They'll have all of these things. They'll start getting rid of all their junk food in their house because they're like, January 1, we're going all in. We just eat nothing but vegetables and, and peanuts and cashews. That's all we eat, right? You do all of that, right? You start thinking about it. But here's a question. Why do we always wait until then? Why? Why put something off all the way until January when you can actually do it today? Maybe, maybe it's like this. Maybe you're sitting here and you're going, well, I just, this year was just rough. So many things happened in my life and this and that and this and that. And you just seemed like you just couldn't move forward. But it was like, today I'm going to work out. Okay, I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to do it tomorrow. <laughs> I'm gonna, and you just, you just can't seem to break through whatever that thing is. If that was your phone or your computer, what would be the first thing that you would do? If your phone, anybody ever had phone issues where like your phone is just glitching and all of these things and it's just not doing what you needed to do or your computer, anybody have a computer? Now, depends on what type of computer. Like if you've got uh, some computers, you start seeing this pinwheel that just keeps spinning. It's the pinwheel of death. When you see that thing, you're like, oh, Lord. And they tell you to do what? Say that again. Reboot or restart. And with sometimes, many times when you do that, guess what happens? It's back to where it needs to be. That's what I want to do for us today and over these next few weeks. I want us to hit the reboot button. To not wait all the way until January for a new start, but you can start today. Tomorrow doesn't have, we don't have to wait until tomorrow. We can start today. The series that we have over these next three weeks, ladies and gentlemen, is called Refresh. Everybody say refresh. 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 That's what we want to do. We're going to hit the refresh button. Yeah, you had some goals back at the beginning of the year. Maybe you didn't accomplish them. Some of you, I hope that you have. Some of you, I've seen, I can see it on you. You had some goals, and I'm seeing the results of those goals. I wish I was seeing those same results on myself. There was, listen, y'all, I ain't going to lie to you. Can I just be honest, y'all? I know some of y'all going to be like, oh, whatever, Pastor, you know, you, you, you ain't going through like that. But listen, everybody's issues are relative to them, right? I almost didn't wear this shirt this morning, y'all. Can I just be honest with you? It's a little too snug on me. It's more snug on me than I want to. And I knew if I would have stuck to my goals at the beginning of the year, this is one of them shirts that I was like, I'm not going to wear it until. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's that goal. I'm going to wear that when. You either, fellas, it's like when I put on, you know, put on the muscles, you know what I'm saying? Ladies, it's usually when like, you, when you lose a little bit, that's when I'm aware, of, right? And this was one of my, I'm aware that shirt when. But this morning I said, listen, 
You preaching on refresh, Will. Put on that shirt and see how far you are from your goals. And I'm a little bit further away than I would like to admit, y'all. So, so listen, if it looks a little snug on your pastor, if, feel, if you don't look like it, it feels like it to me this morning. OK, so listen, we all in this together. I just share that with you because we are all in this together. We all need to refresh. So what I want to do is I want to specifically look at some of the spiritual disciplines that maybe we had at the beginning of the year that we didn't really stick to. Sorry, y'all. Trying to keep this on my... There we go. It almost fell off. That we're going to go back to that. Some of those spiritual disciplines, that some of those goals that maybe you set at the beginning of the year, then maybe you fell off. That we don't have to wait till January to restart these things. We can refresh today on September the 17th. That is today, right? Yes, there we go. We can refresh some of these spiritual disciplines. So let me tell you where we're going to go over these next few weeks. Uh, in a few weeks, we're going to talk about giving, giving of our time, our talent, and our treasure. Amen. Next week, we're going to talk about just being together as a church, attending church. And just that's how that spiritual discipline can transform your life. Today, I want to get to one, just one the most important spiritual discipline that if every person would do this every single day, it would change your life. One thing, not a thousand things, not five things, not three things, not even two things. There is one thing that if you will begin to do, it will change your mood. It will change your perspective. It can even change your health. Yes, it can actually change your health. Let me, let me show you what, what, uh, what David actually says. And this is uh, King David. He was one of the, the greatest kings in all of Israel. This comes from Psalm chapter 119, verses 105 through 112. And I'm reading from the message translation, the message Bible. Here's what David said. By your words, I can see where I'm going. Anybody need some direction in their life? One person, thank you so much for lifting up your hand. Today. Okay, I have more people than that. I can see where I'm going. They throw a beam of light on my dark path. I've committed myself and I'll never turn back from living by your righteous order. Everything's falling apart on me, God. Put me together again with your word. Anybody been there? It seems like everything is just falling apart. You just can't, you take two steps forward and 20 steps back. This is where David was at, a king. Put me together again with your word. Adorn me with your finest sayings. God, teach me your holy rules. My life is as close to my own hands, but I don't forget what you have revealed. Next three verses. Next slide. The wicked do their best to throw me off track. That, 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 that been anybody's story? It just seems like people around you keep throwing you off. But I don't swerve an inch from your course, God. I inherited your book on living. It's mine forever. Forever, ever, forever, ever. What a gift and how happy it makes me. I concentrate on doing exactly what you say. I always have, and I always will. What's the one thing that if every single person, the one spiritual discipline that if you start it today, it can transform your life? Ladies and gentlemen, it's reading the Bible. It's reading the Bible. This is what David said. David, while he was a king, still a human, just like you and I, he was like, I'm a king, I got everything. But yet, there's still people trying to throw me off track. I'm still going through some things in my life. I've started and I've come back a little bit, but I need you. And the one thing he says, I need your word. Yes, yes. I need the word. Hello. Now, here's what I want everybody to know. I am not here today to make anybody feel discouraged if you haven't been doing this spiritual discipline. That doesn't help. Discouragement helps no one. My goal today is to encourage you. Amen. And my goal today is that we all will hit the refresh button. Because if it can work on our phones, how much more can it work in our own lives? Amen. If we just start this one thing, and I know I've preached about this quite a bit, but I'm telling you, I, I, this is what I want for our church. 
I want more than anything for our church to be people of the word. Here's what I, I've, I've, there are many of you in here. This is just, this is just confirmation of what you've already been doing all year long. This is the one discipline for some of you all that you've been doing this all year. I talked to a couple of you already where you were like, hey, this year I've been in the word. I've been in the Bible. And it, it, listen, those of you that you're in the word every day, is it not like life changing? It is. Now, if that's not you, that's not your story. And this seems a little bit intimidating. Just stick around just a few more minutes. I'm here to tell you anyone can do it. And if you start today, your life will be completely transformed by this time next year. Not only that, it'll be completely transformed before the end of this year if you just take this one step. We're going to look. So before I get into just some of the practical principles, let me just define the Bible for you today. And what is the Bible? Okay, because I know for some of us, we've heard about it, but we don't always know what it is. So uh, you can leave it right here for now. But let me define what the Bible is. The Bible, number one, ladies and gentlemen, it's not a book. It is but it isn't. The Bible actually is a collection of books, okay? It's not just one. It's a collection because inside of the Bible, there are 66 different books. It's basically a library, a collection of books written by about 40 people, 35 which we know. There's five books. We don't actually know who wrote them, but we know there's about 40 authors, okay? And it was written over 50. 1,800 years. So imagine this. The first book of the Bible being written today in 2023. The last book of the Bible wouldn't be written till about, what's that? 3,500? Over that course of time. Over 1,500 years. God bless you. Over a, a millennium and a half. Now there are 66 books. Here's how the Bible is broken down. You got an Old Testament and a New Testament. And this is how it's broken down. This is just real quick. Let me take you to school just real quick, and we're going to keep it moving. You've got the first five books of the Bible are called the law or the Torah. Then you have some history. Then you have poetry. You have wisdom. Then you have the major prophet. Then you got the minor prophets, okay? Then in the New Testament, you got the Gospels. It's all about Jesus. Then you have the church history. You have some letters. And then you have Revelation, Book of Prophecy. 66 books written over 1,500 years by 40 different authors, and it was actually written to mainly a Middle Eastern or a Jewish audience thousands of years ago, but yet it still speaks to us today. That's the Bible. 1,500 years, a collection of books, and in here there are so many promises. I'm telling you, there are a lot of books out there. There are books that will help you with business strategy, with self-awareness, with relationships, with exercises, with finances, and even more. But the Bible promises what no other book promises. You see, I have to get all of that information from various books. If I need business strategy, I got to read a business strategy book. If I want uh, uh, information on exercise, I got to go to an exercise book. I want something on relationships. I got to go. But all of that is actually found in the Bible. I can learn business strategy. I can learn how to eat better. I can learn how to love my family and love my neighbor. I can learn how to treat people better. All of that is found in the Bible. Let me tell you what the Bible promises. This is 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 15, verse 17. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood. And what have these scriptures done, church? They have given you wisdom to receive salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. All scripture, everybody say all scripture. All scripture. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach what is true and make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong. Meaning, there are stuff in the Bible, guess what? You ain't going to like. We're not going to like it. You mean I got to forgive people? Man. You're not going to like it. Everything in the Bible you're not going to like 
That's why you can't take stuff out of it just because you don't like it. Because it's there to correct you on where you are wrong and teach you to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. What does scripture promises? Let's, Let's look at the next screen here. It says everything that it promises is found in this verse right here. Scripture promises wisdom. It promises salvation. Uh Uh-oh, y'all. I think I'm going to have to switch mics. It broke on me. Hold up. Stay with me. Check, check, check. Can y'all hear me? Check, check. Now can you hear me? There we go. Okay. What's promises? It promises wisdom, salvation, revelation, teaching, correction, guidance, preparation, equipping, and it tells you about results. Everything that you need. How many of y'all need some wisdom in your life right now? You can find it in a Check, check. Are we there? Y'all stay with me, y'all. I'm trying to make sure that we get this all recorded so that I may have to go back and forth here. Check. There we go. I'm just going to have to hold this like this for now because this mic's going in and out, and I don't have time to switch back and forth. So y'all just stay with me. This is real. It's real and raw today, y'all, so just stay with me, okay? You need wisdom? You find it in the Word of God. Yeah, and it's going to take me too long to fix it, so I'm just going to keep it moving this morning. You need salvation. You need to be saved from a situation. You need salvation in your own life. It is found in the Word of God, which there's only one way to be saved, and that's by giving your life to Jesus Christ. You need revelation. You You need understanding on how to live your life. It's found in the Bible. You need something to teach you. You need to be taught. It's going to teach you the right way, and it's going to correct you. There's a, there's a popular song that's out, and I, and I like it. I love the song, but I'm also like, yo, there's a song that says, try Jesus, not me, because I throw hands. Now, don't get me wrong. I love that song, because you know what? You, you, you put your hands on my wife and my daughters. It, that's a whole other thing. But at the same time, Jesus does tell us, Turn the other cheek. Yeah. So, so even though I don't like it. <laughs> now, Scripture never tells you to throw hands first. Okay, I just want to put that out there, y'all. Because I know, I know we got some fighting folks up in here. Just like, let me, let, me, let me throw hands and then God will forgive me later. Which he will. But, but don't do, don't live your way like that. Let it correct you. Let Scripture correct you, okay? Throw the hands to protect, not first, okay? Let me move on before I get myself in some trouble. It, y'all need some guidance. That's what scripture is going to provide you. You need to be prepared for what life is going to have. Because life is going to throw us all kinds of curveballs. Scripture will prepare you for those curveballs. You need to be equipped to go out and live. And you want to see some real results in your life? The word of God is where we start. Here's what else scripture tells us about the word of God. This is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The word of God is alive. This is the only book or collection of books that is actually alive. How do I know it's alive? It was written, the last book was written over 1,500 years ago. Well over that. And yet it still is speaking to me today. How is that possible? That this book that was written, not even to a group of Americans. This wasn't written to us in this nation. But yet it can still speak to us. Now, I'm going to pause real quick because I got to say something and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I'm pressed on time and I don't we're not going to go there. But I have to say this, okay? because I've heard people say this before. Matter of fact, there's some some people that maybe when you leave church today may actually be on the street corner and they may be saying some stuff like this. What they'll say is, is that Christianity is the white man's religion. That's what they'll say. But you have to understand that doesn't even make geological sense, geographical sense. 
Jesus was from where? Where was Jesus born? Jerusalem. Middle, the Middle East. What is closer to the Middle East? Africa or Europe? Africa. Did you actually know that the scriptures got to Ethiopia well before and Africa well before? Because I have, and because this, this is this is really to my to my black brothers and sisters. So often we're, we're told that this was put on us by slave masters, and there were there were Africans who had the scriptures thousands of years ago. Yeah. You can actually look in the Book of Acts. There's an Ethiopian eunuch who meets uh, one of the disciples, who prays for him, baptizes him. Yeah. And then that eunuch took the scriptures and took Jesus back to Africa. So I need you to understand, that's a lie from the pit of hell. And the scriptures are for everybody. Black, white, Asian, Native American, Latino. It's for everyone. If it was only for one group of people, why Jesus didn't just come back for one person. He said all people were made in the image and likeness of God. So this is for everyone. Let me move on. I just had to say it because I had a guy come tell me that the other day, that this isn't for us. And I said, you a lie. <laughs> Jesus died for me. He died for my, my white brothers, my white sisters, my Native American brothers. He died for everybody. Yeah, I went St. Louis on you. He died for everybody. Let's move forward. The word of a God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. Anybody ever... I have two really deep scars on my thumbs <laughs> from being a kid and playing with pocket knives when I had no business playing with a pocket knife. And they cut me. I still got the scars to this day. But scripture tells us that the word of God is even sharper than that because it'll cut you on both sides. Cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Scriptures will expose you. It'll expose you because the Lord already knows. He knows your deep thoughts. He knows those really good thoughts. And he knows those thoughts you don't want nobody else to know about. And scripture speaks to both of them. It cuts. Oh, man, listen. I love that this book is alive. And this is why we value scripture here at Kazon. Because I believe if you let God's word in your life, it will change you. So we talked about soul and spirit. Here's what that means. Scripture promises to cut right to the heart of every motive that you have. Because see, I, know, I only know your actions. I don't know your intentions and your motives. You're the only person that knows that. You only know my actions. You don't know my motives. You can't read my mind. Right? But scripture cuts to the heart of every motive. Scripture cuts to the heart of every thought. Scripture cuts right to the heart of every desire that you have. And those wrong, evil desires, Scripture will tell you, that ain't, that's not right. But then it goes deeper than that. It goes to joint and marrow because it, it says the Scripture promises to change and improve and affect your mood, your temperament, your well-being. Yeah, yeah. Scripture can heal your relationships. It can heal a broken heart. It can heal a wounded spirit. Scripture can fix marriages, and it can even improve you on your job. <gasps> what? Amen. Anybody ever got written up on your job before? Oh, yeah. Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. No, I'm sorry. I should have said that first. Don't raise your hand. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't raise your hand. I know I did. You know who you are. Okay? Now, usually, here's what will happen is, and I, I get it. Because I have both been an employee and I've also been a boss. I don't mean like, I'm a boss. I mean, you know what I'm saying, okay? A lot of times when we get written up, our first place of blame is always on the person that wrote us up. They tripping. They doing this and they doing that. and nah, 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 nah. But if you really got honest, I, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. There are some times where people just have a grudge against you. I know that that to be true. But if we're honest, probably more times than not, if you were honest with yourself, take accountability. Were you on time? I was only five minutes late, but were you late? So you mad at them. You mad at them, but you were late. Did you give everything that you had? No, I gave about 80%. Well, 
at least you're honest. Be honest. But scripture will, it can even help you improve your work because the Bible says this, whatever you do, do it as you are working unto the Lord. So if I'm working for the Lord, I'm going to give everything I have, even if I don't like my boss. Because Jesus still died for them, too. Even though you, you wonder why he died for them, he still died for them, too. Okay? And scripture can do this. So here's a question that I have for you. What would it look like for you to incorporate the Bible in your daily decisions? Now, does this mean, Pastor, well, I've never read the Bible before. I don't even know what's in it. I'm going to help you today. I'm going to give you a starting point later on today. Because so often, I remember being younger. See, I think I, I count myself really blessed because my parents, my father was a pastor. My mom taught Sunday school and has been a pastor. And I, for me, as a young child, I've been raised up in the word. Like I learned my alphabet through the scriptures. Yeah, we were that saved. <laughs> Every scripture we had... If it was the letter A, acknowledge the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, soul, and strength. If it was believe, believe with the Lord and your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. If it was C, I could go through every letter. Q and X were a little bit difficult. <laughs> right? But we got through it. But see, I know not, that's not everybody's story. And so I remember having a friend of mine who was like, I don't even know where to start. Do I start? Because most books, where do you start? At the beginning. Now, you can, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't. But here's what I need you to know about the scriptures. The main character in the Bible is not you. There is one central person in the Bible who is not a made up character. He is a real, he is a real person. And that's Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm going to help us at the end of this service. But if you want to start in the Bible, the place that I will always lead people to, I showed you on the screen, is the Gospels. It's Jesus. And why there, Pastor? Why don't you start me in Genesis? If Genesis is the first book of the Bible, shouldn't I start in Genesis? Well, I need you to start with Jesus because everything that came before Jesus is talking about him. And everything that came after Jesus is all because of him. So if you want to know the whole crux of the Bible, you start with Jesus. If you can understand Jesus, then you go back to the beginning and go, okay, how do we get to this dude right here? So it's kind of like, anybody ever seen Star Wars? The original, the first Star Wars that came out was not part one. It was actually part four. The Bible is a lot like Star Wars. It don't start at the beginning. Start in the middle. If you understand the middle, we can take you back to the beginning because the middle is going to tell you everything else that goes on around it. It's all about Jesus. So that's just that's that was free for you today. <laughs> Somebody like they talking about Star Wars. I like this church over here. There are four things that you need to incorporate the Bible in your daily decisions. Four things. Okay? If you've got a camera phone, you can take a picture of these, screen, these next four screens that are going to pop up. If you're taking notes, write this down right here. Number one, the first thing you have to do is you've got to make room for it. Here's what I know. I know what's important to you in your life because you make room for it. If you have a calendar and you use it, I know what's important to you and what is not. Because the most important things are going to be on your calendar. Right? It's going to be on there. For many of it, I use a calendar because if I don't use it, I'm going to forget. So you got to make room for this. On my, cap, on my phone right now, every single day at 6.30 a.m., I have a calendar reminder that says one thing, time with God. When my alarm goes off at 6.30, we'll get up, open up that Bible, and start reading. You have to make space for it. you got to make room for the Word of God. If you don't make room for it, then you'll always put it off. Now, can I be real, real honest with y'all today? I'm going to be real, real honest. This is not easy. There are going to be some days you're going to wake up late. There are going to be some days you're going to wake up early and you're going to be like, oh, man, I still got, I got another hour to sleep. And you're going to want to go back to sleep. There's going to be days you're going to wake up and guess what? Your whole day will have gone by and you didn't read. It's going to happen. How do I know? It happened to me this week. I'm going to be honest as a pastor. Because a lot of people will be thinking, well, she don't go do nothing. 
he, you know, he just he just stand in front of Jesus all week long and then show up on Sunday and preach. No, nah, I'm a person. I wake up just like you all, get some better nights of sleep than I get on others and things like that. There were a few days this week. Matter of fact, yesterday I woke up, but I did the first thing I did was not read my Bible. <gasps> I said it. I'm being honest with you. You know the first thing I did was yesterday? Got on Instagram. And I was like, I'm reading a few minutes. A few minutes went by. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute. I got I to gotta leave the house. And I'm getting my kids all ready. Okay, I'll listen to the Bible while I'm driving my kids. And we were driving to go see one of my cousin's football games. And we just listened to music. So I didn't read my Bible then. And then I came back. Okay, I'm going to read it when I'm eating lunch. And when I'm eating lunch, I didn't read my Bible then. It wasn't until right before I went to bed that I was like, Lord, forgive me. I spent a whole day. And I didn't open up this word. And I need this. And I'm preaching about this tomorrow. <laughs> but I'm being honest with you. Because I don't want anybody to come to this place of if you miss a day, that you're a sinner. God don't love you because you missed a day. That is not how the, this operates in this walk with Christ. Now, is it important? Yes. Should this be a priority? Yes. But have I missed a few days as a pastor? Yes. But I, my goal is I don't make one day turn into two. Amen. And two days don't become a week. And a week doesn't become a month. And a month doesn't become a six months. And six months doesn't become a year. You just you refresh. And you come right back to it. But you have to make room. You've got to make space for it. If it's important, you will, you will do it. I know this. I know this. There's a lot of us. We ain't ever missed a meal. You will not go a day without eating. Look, I was honest. I need y'all to be honest with me too. You won't skip a meal. We won't. We make sure we eat. Every single day. Even if it's late. Oh, I got to get something. Man, I'm hungry. It's got to be the same with the word of God. I may not be able to eat a full meal like I want to, but I'm going to get some of this word in me today. Because this will transform my life. So the first thing is you make room. The second thing you all have to do, you got to be still. What I have learned is that there are all these distractions. And the easiest thing to do is just to throw the Bible in to just to your distracted day. But think about this. If you and I are talking, right, we're talking, but I'm not looking at you and I'm focused on all these other things and I'm talking to all these other people and I'm doing all of this, you're going to be like, hello. Are we, are we, or you just going to go, you know what, he ain't listening. Let me walk away. Now, God's not going to walk away from us, but I think he's important enough that we can just take a moment to just focus on him Amen. and just listen for a little bit. Now, when I say be still, does that mean? No, that just means let's turn off these distractions. Yeah, yeah. If you're a parent and you have really young kids, you may have to get up about 10 minutes earlier before all them kids run up in there, mommy, daddy, because it's going to be nonstop the rest of the day. You're not going to get a moment. You're not going to get one. But you have to find, find time. When can you make room and when can you be still? For some of you, it's the morning. Some of you, just be honest with yourself. You're not a morning person. That's okay. You know good and well. If you try to do this in the morning, you're going to fall asleep on the word of God. You're going to be reading the Bible, and next thing you know, you're going to be breathing the Bible. <sighs> so you find, you make room, and you be still. Find a place where you, it just can be you and the word of God. Sometimes it may be driving to, on your way to work. You're just listening to the word. Because guess what? Yes, you can listen to the Bible. You can listen to it. Because for some of us, reading just isn't the easiest thing for us, and I'm so thankful that we live into the day and age that I can listen to the Bible. Amen. You can listen to it. So we make space, we make room, we're still, we're quiet. The next thing, we're going to actually read it, or like I said, you listen. You read or you listen to it. But you're going to do this. Just get it in you. I'm getting ahead of myself. Do it. Listen to it. I love that we can do this today, that you can actually listen to the Bible. Like, if you do not have this, there's an app called the Bible app. 
the YouVersion Bible app. If you do not have it yet, go to your app store on your phone and download the Bible app. Download it. Because you can have the Bible with you all day long. You sitting at the grocery store, you can turn on the Bible and just listen to it while you're there. Wherever you are, get the Bible. And now you don't just have to uh, read it. You can actually listen to it. Let me, let me, let me just, y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. Listen, I love this. I love this. You can listen to the word of God. Listen to this, y'all. Better to have little with fear for the Lord than to have great treasure and inner turmoil. A bowl of vegetables with someone you love is better than steak with someone you hate. Ooh, that's a word right there. That's a word right there. That's Proverbs. Proverbs. Listen, a bowl of vegetables with someone you love is better than steak with someone you hate. That's a good word right there. I need some steak, but not with somebody I hate. Okay, let me, let me, I'm, now I'm thinking about steak. But see, you see what I'm saying? But you can listen to the Bible. That was from Proverbs, Proverbs 15, verse 17. Okay? Listen to it. Just get it in you, though. Read it. Let it speak to you. Let it correct you. And then the last one is listen. You can listen to the Bible, or what I mean by listen is after you've read, think about it. Reflect on it. What did I just read? Now, there will be some times, I'm going to be really honest with you, if you're ever reading through the book of Leviticus, okay, I'm just going to be really honest with you. There are some books in the Bible that you're going to be like, I don't know what I just read. That's going to happen sometimes. That's why I always tell people, start in the gospel, start with Jesus. It's very simple to follow through. But there are parts in the, in the Old Testament that you really have to have a better understanding of what's going on. So that's why I would even encourage some of you all, if you really want to take this to the next level, get yourself a study Bible. Everybody say study Bible. study Bible. Because a study Bible, you'd be like, okay, I don't know what I just read. And then you can go down below that, and it'll actually say, like, this is what they're talking about. And you're like, oh, okay, that makes a little bit more sense. And then here's another thing. I've said this before, but I like to do the, a message like this once a year just so that everybody, we're all on the same page. Read, find a translation of the Bible that you can understand. I'm going to say it again. Find a translation of the Bible that you can understand. When I was growing up, there was only two translations that I knew of. It was the King James, which some folks will tell you, you ain't saved if you ain't reading the King James. That's not true. They, or I've heard some people say, Jesus wrote, wrote the King James. That's not true either. King James Version wasn't written until like the 15th century. Jesus was alive well before that. That's not what he read. <laughs> okay? Find you one because nobody speaks in beseech. Helloeth. Greatest God of Israel. I beseech thee as thy lowly servant. You don't talk like that today. So find you a translation that you can understand. One that I usually will preach from is the New Living Translation, NLT. That's normally what I preach from. But there's some other really good ones. The uh, English ESV. Just find you one. There's a really, really good one if you really want to like, like kind of laugh. You want a good laugh, but you want the word to. Get the, if you go on there, you have to go, go search the different languages. But there's a language called Hawaiian Pigeon. The Hawaiian Pigeon Translation. Just, just find it. Y'all, it sounds like you just talking to family members. <laughs> I love it. Hawaiian pigeon uh, translation. It's, it's almost Ebonics. It's almost, it's not quite, but it's real close. It's real close. And I'm just waiting on somebody to create the uh, Ebonics Bible. I had a friend of mine, he was actually like, going to try to do that real quick. But he was like, I don't know how to even start that. But, but find you a translation that you can actually understand. But yeah, check out that Hawaiian pigeon. That's a really, really good one. You may have to really search for it um, and find me at the church. I, I'll, I'll show you how to get to it. But it's really good. And just listen to it. I mean, it's, I should have had that for y'all to listen to. I want y'all to find it on your own. But, but find you a, a translation of the Bible that you can understand, okay, so that you can reflect on it. Because if you don't understand it, you can't live this thing out, church. The whole goal of it is for you to understand it so you can live it, so you can do what the Bible actually says. If you don't get it, you can't, you can't live it. And that's never been God's goal for you. He wants you to be able to live it out. So make room, be still, and 
uh, read and then listen. Read and then listen. Here's a couple things that I want to give to us, and I'm about to give us just a couple more things, and then we're, I promise you we'll be out here in just a few, few more minutes. Why do we value scripture, and why am I pushing us so hard for you, to take, for you to step into this one spiritual discipline? Just one. Just one. If you, I'm telling you, if you will start this today, your life will be different in a few months. I'm telling you. I've seen it. There are those of you in here today. I know, for, I know for a fact, Roy, beginning of this year, you said, I'm committed. I'm reading the Bible. Is your life not different today? Come on. And I didn't tell him to say that because I know some people are like, he set them up. Now, I don't, have any, I don't have any plants here, and I don't plant people to be like, I need you to say this on this part. I need you to stand up. I, I don't do that. That's weird, okay? It's weird. Let's just be honest. That's weird, Okay? Um, I have nothing to sell. I just only have something to give to you, and that's Jesus. That's all I have, okay? Why do we value Scripture? Because Scripture does so many things for you, and I just want to give you these, and then we're going to move forward. Here are just some, a few things, and I put the Scriptures at the end so that you can go read these on yourself. So take a screenshot of these, because I don't want you to just listen to me preach and be like, okay, I'm cool. No, you got to go search for this on your own. Read it for yourself. What does Scripture do? It brings salvation. It builds your faith. It gives you hope. It leads you to freedom. It enables you to defeat sin in your life. If you've been struggling with a temptation, Scripture will help you to overcome that thing. You need some joy because you're just always depressed and down. Scripture can be your source of joy. And it can provide prosperity and success. Scripture can. How many of y'all want to be prosperous? You want to be successful in everything you do. Scripture tells you how to do it. Through reading the word of God. Through reading the word of God. So how do we do this? How do we do this? Well, I've heard, I know we got a couple folks in here that this, this is you, and I love y'all. Y'all are my inspiration. But, but y'all know anybody that like, like they are, always working out like when you see them you just like one day that's gonna be me <laughs> but that day still hasn't come yet but I believe it's gonna come for us okay but you know those folks that's always working out right ask any one of them any one of them they didn't start off there anybody that you see that's in great physical shape they didn't start from this place of like I love doing this it was hard at first. There were some weights they couldn't lift. But they kept at it. And they kept at it. And they kept at it. And they kept at it. Because the more that you're in it, the stronger you will get. If you do this on purpose, one day it will become enjoyable. It will be. See, maybe not at first. First you're going to be like... All right, I'm going to do it because Pastor Will said to do it, but I don't even know if I'm going to get anything out of this. But the more you do it, the more enjoyable it will become. God will start speaking to you more and more and more and more and more. And so, guess what? The thing about it is, is that you don't jump into this. Anybody that lifts weights, nobody starts at 300 pounds. You start much smaller, and then you build your way up. Nobody starts running 10 miles. You will die. <laughs> you start with a few feet, but you start. <laughs> a few feet. I didn't say a car. I didn't say a mile. For some of us, it's a few feet. Okay? But I'm just being real with us. Okay? But you, a little bit will become a, long, a lot in due time. So here's what I like to say, and we did this in the faith series last month, but I'm going to bring it back to us again, because my goal is I don't just want a couple of you doing this. If all of us will take this step, our church will be different, this community will be different, your families will be different, and this world will be different. Someone actually said if every Christian would simply just read their Bible every day, you would see the crime rate plummet. 
you would see families become stronger. Simply if Christians just did one thing, read their Bible every single day. Just, that's it. So here's what we do. Let's see on the screen. 15 minutes a day. Now, am I saying read the Bible 15 minutes a day? No, 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 no. Some of you all, you're, you're past this. I'm not talking to y'all. Some of us, we're past, you, you have worked out enough, you've been reading the scriptures enough that you can do 30 minutes. You can go longer than that. But for a lot of us, this is your starting point because this is the refresh. Everybody say refresh. refresh. This is the refresh. 15 minutes a day. You read your Bible for five minutes. And I literally mean this. Set a timer because it will help you get to the next level. Still on it. Thank you very much, Siri. <laughs> because I don't want to talk to you right now. I should have turned her off. You read your Bible for five minutes. Then after that, you pray for five minutes. Well, I don't even know how to pray. Pray what you just read. Okay? So let's say I just showed you a scripture. Uh, uh, Joshua 1 8. Joshua 1 8. If you read that, it would say, uh, study this book of the law, meditate on it day and night, so that you will have be prosperous and have good success. Okay, here's how you would pray that. God, help me today to meditate on this word. You said if I did this, that you would give me, I would be, give me prosperity and I would have good success. God, help me today to have good success. I'm starting my day with your word, so today I come before you. Then it's, you could pray for somebody else. God, help my sister. She's going through a difficult time. God, help my boss who wrote me up yesterday, but help them Help me to work better and help them to lead better, right? You just simple, set a timer, five minutes. Anyone can do this. Anyone can do this. And then after that, you reflect. What did you just read about? Just sit there and think about it. What did you read about? How can you live this out today? 15 minutes. A little bit will go a long way. You just do this. Am I saying read for 20 hours a day? No, you ain't got time for that. You, you don't. But you do have 15 minutes. I know you do. Amen. I know every person in here has 15 minutes a day that they can do this. Everybody. And if you tell me you don't, I'm going to say, okay, tell me, tell me, give me a schedule. Let's really write this. Thing. Let's really see. Because you can do it. You can do it. Amen. If your commute to, to your job takes you 20 minutes, 15 minutes of it could literally be this. Make room. Because reading your Bible every day is not about knowing more. It's about being in the best position for God to equip you to love and lead others to follow Jesus. Amen. The more you get to know the God of the Bible, the more he equips you to love and lead others. You just start with a little bit. A little bit. So can you do this today? Let's hit the refresh button. Let's not wait all the way until January. Let's not even wait till Monday. What if we did this right here, right now, today? Today, before I go to bed today, I'm going to spend 15 minutes with God. I'm going to read my Bible for five minutes. I'm going to pray for five minutes. I'm going to listen for five minutes. One discipline. You add this one discipline to your life, it will transform you. You'll think different. You'll spend your money different. You'll treat other people differently. You'll actually work differently. You'll treat your body differently because of how you read the Bible. So where do I start, Pastor Will? In a few weeks, we're going to start reading through the book of John together as a church. So here's what I'm going to encourage you to do. Start there. If you don't know where John is in your Bible, if you have a physical one, just turn to the table of contents. It will take you to the, the page. If you have the Bible app, you just type in John, J-O-H-N. It will take you to that book. Just start there. Read the book of John for five minutes a day. In a few weeks, we're going to go through it. I'm going to teach you what, the, what, that, what, the, what that Bible is talking about and how it impacts your life. But if you'll just start reading the Bible, your life will be different. I can point to so many people in here who I've seen your lives be different because of this one discipline. I can see it. My life is different. Those of you that have been here for a while, I've told you that the Bible is how I overcame a pornography addiction. The Word of God helped me to do that. 
the word of God helped me to actually lead a co-worker to Jesus Christ. The word of God even helped me transform my low self-esteem that I had for myself. Because I started meditating and reflecting on scriptures that built me up. And so I'm here to tell everybody here, you just add this one discipline. It will change your life. Five minutes. Give God five minutes in the word. He'll change everything in your life. Does it mean you're not going to go through tough times? That ain't what it means. You never heard me say that. But it will help you in those tough times. So today, church, let's take a step. But before we, everybody stand to your feet. Because we're going to pray and I'm going to get us out of here. I want you to see the most important verse that I believe is in all of the Bible. There's a lot, the whole Bible is important, but I want you to see the most important book, uh, verse in all of the Bible, because this is why God gave you us all the word. Yes. Simply says this, for this is how God loved the world. John three sixteen, he gave his one and only son. I'm sorry, y'all. So that who, everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. The entire Bible was written so that you would know that God loves you. No matter what you've done, no matter how much faith you have in him or little that you have in him, no matter what, he loves you. And he loved you so much, he sent Jesus and he loved you so much, he gave you his word. That's how good God is. He's not looking for perfection, church. He's not looking for 365 days. If you don't read it every single day, I can't bless you. No, he sent Jesus because he loves you. What he's looking for is progression. Every day, I'm going to take a step closer to Jesus. Every day, a little bit more. Tomorrow, a little bit more. But I'm going to start today. Today we hit the refresh button. Today we are going to put God first. Because he loves you. And he sent Jesus for you. So Heavenly Father, I lift up every person under the sound of my voice as we get ready to be dismissed and get out of church today. I pray that every person here leaves with the understanding that God, you love them. And I pray that we also understand that we can hit the refresh button. We can hit the refresh button and say, you know what, maybe I haven't been in the word. Maybe I haven't put you first in my life, but today I'm going to start. I'm going to simply start with the word of God. God, help us today as we take steps to just read through the book of John or those that may have already uh, be, be in their own Bible plans and different things like that. Help us to make this a priority in our lives. And God, I pray that people will actually see what your word promises. That if we put you first, all these other things that we're worried about, cared about, focused on, will be added to us. God, because you want to give us wisdom. You want us to have knowledge. You want us to love better. You want us to, our bodies to be healed. You want our minds to be renewed. You want our relationships to be stronger. You want us to be free from addiction. God, you want us to be prosperous, not just financially, but relationally and in our health. God, there's so much that you want for us. And I pray that we would take this step to get into your word because, God, you want to give to us so much more. But the way for us to receive that is through your word. Help us to make it a priority. And God, as we do this, by the end of this year, God, people's lives are going to look so different. And they're going to have these habits that they're going to carry into 2024. And 2024 is going to be better because we put you first. It's in Jesus' name. As we continue praying, maybe those of you that are here, you need to know that Jesus loves you. And you need to know that he sent his son Jesus for you. And everything that God has for you is available if you give your life to him. What did he do? He lived a life you could not live. None of us could be perfect. Jesus lived a perfect life. He died a death that actually every single one of us, we're the ones that really deserve to die. 
for every lie we've, we've told him, for every time we've stolen from somebody, for every time we've lusted after something or someone, all of these diff evil things that we have done, he did not do them yet. He became our sin on a tree. Died. Was placed in the tomb. Three days later, he walked out of that tomb as our rector, resurrected Lord and Savior. And the Bible says, now, if you call on his name, your past, everything that you've done before is wiped away. You are made into a new creature today, a new person who you were yesterday no longer exists. And when God looks at you and you're like, man, forgive me for all of this. He's like, I already did. I see you today new. And if you want to be made new today, just lift up your hand long enough for me to see you. Today's the day for you to give your life to him or back to him. I see one, two, three hands that have just been lifted in this room. Four hands, another hand. Is there anybody else? Just leave it up. You can put it down if you've already lifted it up. Is there anybody else? Today's the day. Lord, I thank you for the hands that have been lifted. The Bible says the angels and God in heaven are rejoicing because of those that have just given, they're about to give their lives to Jesus Christ. Now, what we're going to do, church, we're all going to pray together. I need you to know this, that those of you that just lifted your hand, it's not this prayer that saves you. We're going to pray it, but it's your belief that Jesus is who he says he is that he died and rose for your sins. And once you say amen to this prayer, you will be a new person. So everybody, because nobody prays it because I'm alone, repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. God, I admit that I'm a sinner and I need a savior. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for my sins. I believe he rose from the dead I am saved. I am made new. My past is wiped away. And today, I live for Jesus. I love for Jesus. And God, teach me to love others the same way you love me. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Come on, Kazon Church, let's celebrate.